Me? It's fine. I realise we're on the same real life now. Bless him. Gonna be. I said last time we'd go for a true. Uh, a true? What do you know about the case? Nothing. Not heard of it? Nope. Not heard of Jesse? No. Do you know what, what thing it is this time? A man or a woman? <laughs> you were calling that a man last time for so long. Chomping out. <laughs> uh, what woman is called John? <laughs> uh, it's a woman, okay. You know it's a woman. Dan? Hello. What do you know? About what, JC? Well, it's a type of digger, isn't it? JCB, I don't know. <laughs> I what? think that's JCB, not JC Lee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is quality banter. What banter? Um, okay. I haven't got a Scooby, mate. Okay, I think it. Yeah, oh, got a as Lee stands up, I think oh. it. Ri no. It rings some bells. I'm not sure if you're actually seeing. A oh, bum. He's out. I'm not sure oh, if you're that's... actually seeing the gameplay because it says something about the internet. But okay. Lee will sit and he can focus. Right, so we're we'll going back. You might know this more when you um listen to it. Uh, this happened. You won. How old? Ninety one. What? Nineteen ninety one. This is. Okay, thank you. Just to be more factually. Uh, J C. Lee is. Good to uh, see some ladies, J C. Lee was. I'm trying to find the exact age, but. I don't know what, where it is. Uh, sh she was young. <laughs> this isn't good, is it? I've got it on here somewhere. She was like, she was at school. She was eleven, I think she was. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I haven't got the exact age for some reason. Yeah, but I think she was about eleven. So J C was walking to school, and you know, like they get on the big yellow buses in America and that, like from The Simpsons. With the yeah. old, with the with the old driver, like he don't bother, does he? That driver, whatever his name was, Otto. Otto. He yeah. don't bother. He just does it. So uh, she it. she leaves on June the tenth. Uh, says like goodbye to her. I think it's her little sister Parents. was playing in the yard, and then she says goodbye oh, to a step playing just out in the garden, in front garden, and says go says uh, bye to her stepdad, Carl, Carl Probin. Did she say anything dodgy? No, she just said, oh, see you later. See you uh, she walks up the road, Carl can see this, it's just up the road, and as she's walking up the road, like, up, up a hill, it's like up a hill and it bends to the left, he's just watching, like, you know, you just watch someone walk off, he's probably just watching, like, let's just make sure she gets on the bus, or just watching. Immediately, a, a car zooms up right next to it, uh, right next to her. Uh, she, he, Carl says he can see her slumped over, and then she gets dragged into the car by a woman. A, wo a woman. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Carl, um, you know, one which is mental. It was a huge case at the time. Like someone getting snatched, but you got to think back. They weren't, you know, when they say, "Oh, back in my day, I didn't lock the door, and it was so nice and all that lot." But this was still happening back then. Um, he lies. Old people don't trust them. Are kids more protected these days? Do you think than they were back no. then? Do you think that would happen? Do you think now someone would walk their little snowflake to the bus stop and hold their hand? Oh yeah, because that's what no, I was going to say, there are a bunch of snowflakes in this generation. Hmm. I never get walked to A bunch of babies. Yeah. I could have been kidnapped. It could have been. But maybe Depends it's different. Depends how rich you are. If you're different. richer, you don't protect them more. Uh, maybe it's different for a girl, is it? If you had a girl. No, not really. I don't uh, think so. Um, yeah, so, okay. In China, they prefer boys, so. Okay. Um, so, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet points before we get... Oh my god, this guy's really annoying me. Uh, before we get into this case. So, the main things were this. Um, JC was kidnapped by a man we know now to be called Philip Garrido. And he was helped. The woman who jumped out the car was his wife, Nancy. She jumped out, tasered JC Lee, and pulled her into the car. 
Uh, as we'll find out in a little bit, Philip had already been in jail for the rape of a 14-year-old in 1972. Who's uh, Philip? He, Philip... The Greedo. <laughs> Greedo. He kidnapped, yeah, with his wife, Nancy Greedo. Philip had right. already with this plan to kidnap a young girl uh, and to make a sex slave, really. Um, we'll find... How's this unsolved? Because I know it's not it unsolved. Already. We said it was solved. We're talking. We're taking a solved case. We said this week. This is just true crime. Oh, okay. We're getting in the head of, of the victim, uh, Nancy, oh, who we who we'll find out more about later. Married Philip in jail, and followed his instructions and started. How can you marry someone in jail? Was she in jail? We'll find out later. Um, and started scouting for girl. So apparently she scouted out J C Lee. Which is Frank. weird, um, and this was this was in 1991. It was still an open cold case in 2009. So an open oh, cold open, open cold case means they're not looking, but it if something comes up, they'll reopen it. Uh, so we know who it is. Yeah, but I'm just saying, 18 years later, it was pr pretty much you know no leads. No leads, but we'll find out what happened. So, morning of abduction. We'll go back to that, the abduction. Uh, so, JC left the house. Her stepsister was playing in the yard, and her stepdad was doing the car. I think he was washing the car or something. Uh, a silver car pulled Whoa. up. Doing it? He was doing it. I've heard about them. From behind. Uh, a silver car pulled up a couple of houses. It's only a couple of houses up the road. Pulled up, grabbed JC, and... Uh, Carl, he gave chase, bless him, the stepdad, he noticed, he seen what was going on. Unfortunately, even though he's working on the car, he, <laughs> I think he panicked. As we'll find, like, normally we might say, oh my god, he was involved, do you know what I mean? But now we know he wasn't. Um, he panicked and he gave chase on a mountain bike. <laughs> and uh, they quickly, <laughs> they quickly zoomed away from him, let's just say that. <laughs> Why didn't he do, do the car? I don't know. He's like out there washing the car and he's like, oh my god, grab the bike. So that's pedaling up the hill, gets halfway up and he's like, this was a very bad decision. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, we sa like we said, Nancy was scouting out for a young and blonde girl, um, which is very, very weird. Um, we found, we find out that Nancy could not have uh, children. Um, mm. So if we're thinking, why would, why would you do that? If someone's like, oh, go and find me a kid, like that mm. I can make as a sex slave. Do you think that was because she couldn't have kids? Like we don't actually know the reasons why. Do you think that? How do you think? How do you think? No, but do you think? No, but well, do you think Philip was like, oh, you, this could be your daughter, and we could have kids, and we'll just use this young girl to, because she wanted a family, but she couldn't have it. Because I'm just trying to think, mm. like, they want to nick someone. I'm trying to think of how you could agree. Oh, you had a mental <laughs> screw loose, didn't they? How you, you could. It, 1976 or something they started planning, you said. So, and they stole her in 1991, so yeah. they all started in like 15... No, yeah. my maths ain't good. No. Yeah, it is. 15 yeah, years later. 14, 15 years. Yeah. <clears throat> so she can't have been that good if she was scouting for 14, 15 years. <laughs> I don't know if she was scouting the whole time, but... You know. Maybe she's busy for Um... <laughs> I said last time on the um, John Bonet one that the Netflix documentary wasn't very good, but the Netflix documentary for this that you can find was really good. And so, um, is on the like, is there on. like um, what do you call it reenactments of like the kid with them? Uh, was there reenactment? There's no reenactment. It's all real, like the real place, the bus, the yeah, people. Why would like, people want there to be a reenactment? Uh, yeah. No, because whenever there's like a reenactment of crimes, I prefer it. So it's a pass. To me. be fair, on it, the, on the documentary, it said that the the school bus was there waiting, and the kids saw it. They literally saw someone grab JC. They even told the bus driver, 
and they said someone just gra out, grabbed sorry, it. Well, the bus driver just kept on his route. He said, "Oh, oh well, I'll tell him when we get bolt. to I'll tell him when we get to the school." Even though he Needs probably he probably could have caught up. Um, the stepdad he saw it. The stepdad, Carl, he gave a great a great description of the car and a perfect description of the woman of Nancy. And the police didn't use it. You can see on the documentary that um, the drawing of the woman and the police, uh, as Carl says himself in the documentary, the police just were incompetent again, late, and started pinning it on Carl. And over the years, he said he d he's done five lie detector tests. Five lie... How bad were the police? They did not set up a roadblock. Um... Philip and Nancy, they drove from f for three hours, so they p grabbed JC in Lake Tahoe, and I think they ended up, uh, I don't know if I got the name, but it was somewhere, it was three hours away. No one gave a chase, because the police didn't come and chase and find out what was going on. There was no roadblock to, like, you just set up a roadblock straight away, you'll be able to, you know, if you set up a ten, min ten mile radius, then they might have had a chance, but they didn't. Um... We'll find out about the super premeditated case because it was all planned and things like that. Um, and this is this is literally like you might have heard about this case and this man, Mr. Joseph Fritzel. This oh, Joseph Fritzel is similar to Philip Garrido, and in that he planned um, to use his own daughter as a sex slave when he was in jail for a rape. So it seems like you go to jail and you Whoa. just as you go to jail and you just decide, you know what, I'll just do this. I won't get nice. caught. Right, let's go to Greedo. Um We're in the top three, lovely stuff. I haven't even played like a single hand. Um Garrido, <laughs> if you look if you look into these sort of people, Joseph Fritzel is exactly the same. What they start out as uh, is as a peeping Tom, so they look through people's windows. Joseph Fritzel used to ride around on his bike every single night, looking through people's windows and tossing himself off in the middle of the street and getting arrested. Oh, Whoa. Toffing. I know. Can you yes, believe it? Yes, toffing, right? That's what, it says. That's what it says on here. Um, That's a weird So Greedo, Greedo did the same, and he, like we said, 1972. Okay, I'll win this hand. Surely. In I folded. In 1972, he was charged with the rape of a 14-year-old, but unfortunately, uh, she did not come and testify, so he got away with it because of wit uh, witness intimidation. He went round the house and, you know, threatened her. But Oh, God's sake. So he got away with it in 1972. 1976 is... This is uh, a bit of a mental one. Um, have I got more about this down here? Uh, I think I do. Uh, so this one is, this is really weird. This happens on the documentary. Is that uh, in 1976, he trapped a woman. So what he did was, he spent a night going around, I think it was Las Vegas. Was it Las, it was somewhere with casinos. He was going around and he was, yeah, ask, he was asking for, yeah, but I wasn't sure if it was, I know Las no, Vegas. they got casinos now. I know, but other places do. He was going around saying, oh, I need a lift, I need a lift home. And then when it, when a woman would give him a lift home, he'd try and rape him. And uh, he tried it once on this night, and uh, he actually, uh, the woman ran away. She gave him a slap and ran away. Um, so he was a bit angry, so he waved down another woman, and... He trapped her, and I think we'll find out about that case in a little bit more detail. And we're going to find out about a little bit more detail now? Uh, no. Why didn't I write it down? Uh, okay, so I remember. So he tr so he asked this woman for a lift. She's on the documentary, this woman. And he says, uh, can I have a lift? And she's like, yeah. And then he says, can you go down this alley? And she takes him down this alley, and then he grabs her and puts her into this, like, one of those storage like containers from storage hunters traps her in there there's oh, like nice. a mattress and he was trying to keep her in there like for a long long time uh she got she actually got 
rescued because a policeman saw cut was coming by and saw that the lock had been cut off so he opened it up and she sprinted out <laughs> and then she got rescued um oh my god uh he went to jail for i think they put him in there for 50 50 years oh yeah oh, it's on here i've i skipped ahead we'll come back to that but 50 years 5-0. Oh. 5-0. Oh. Uh, so, no, so then he went to jail, he came up with a plan not to get it's caught, rich. and then after jail, he built a complex in the, in his back garden of sheds and uh, soundproof. It, he made it soundproof. He told it, he was living with his mum who had, um, which one did she have? Dementia. Either dementia or Alzheimer's, I'm not sure which one. But she Probably was, uh, he told everyone that he needed soundproof sheds because he was going to practice music. Uh, he moved it from one soundproof tent to loads and loads of buildings. Um, and then we'll find out more about what he did to JC in those tents later on. Which included... How did these people get the money? That's my question. Don't know. Which included him telling JC that her name wasn't JC. Do not write your name down. And he told her, this is very, very weird... He told her that her name was Snoopy. Uh, Snoop Dogg. No, no, Snoopy from Charlie Brown. The dog. Okay. I don't know that. Which weird. is weird. But we'll come back to that. Uh, she was in the... She was in... JC got put to that first room. So just that small, small tent. For a whole year. And he was saying, Your name's not JC, it's Snoopy. Don't write. Don't pick up a pen. Stop stop um writing your name uh jc says because spoiler alert she's out and safe and free that um when she got to the complex so when he brought her back to his house i think she had a she had a blindfold on but she was trying to count the steps and like so if she ever did get rescued she wanted to like help out and try and say like guess where she was um have you heard of stockholm syndrome I've mm. heard of it. I don't know what yeah. it is. Yeah, I know what it is. You fall in love with your attacker. Or yeah. So or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So she said that she. A lot of people have said that she's got Stockholm syndrome, and she she gets quite angry about it in the interview, saying that she doesn't. She literally was just surviving. Like she, you do what you have to do to stay alive. Um. Mm. Yeah, so we'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, JC, she, so she was continually raped by Philip. She had two kids when she was 14 and then when she was 16. Whoa. Uh, his? His kids. You might say, why why didn't she, you try and escape to her? She said that Garrido told her that there were killer dogs outside if she tried to escape. So she would be killed. Which, if you're, you know, if there's a man hurting you and you're gonna believe it aren't you you're not gonna try uh garrido did bring her food though he'd bring her loads of fast food he would be nice um mm. he would go from being really like horrible and raping and crying and being really nice and bringing her f uh, fast food burgers um he told jc that it, uh she was sent to him to help him with his sexual problem and his demon angels allowed him to take her is what he told her Whoa, what the f- what? He said, Don't, you know, you're 11 years old and the man's grabbed you off the street and he's like, it's okay. My demon angels and God has said, this is all good. He said, Gucci. Um, so that must be horrible. So, hang on, hang on. So, so, just going back to what you said earlier, they, they, they planned this in 1976 and now they're saying about demon angels and stuff. Well, he planned it in 1976. He planned it in 1976, but we'll find out when Nancy joined him. But yeah, he's had this on the back burner. Like Joseph Fritzl. The, the demon like, angels. Like Fritzl. Fritzl planned his um his basement for like 12 years in his, in his house. He even got his um his what was it? Son-in-law even helped him out putting the doors down there and he didn't say anything. Yeah, so there's a thing where they... I don't know. It's just a weird thing to say. Uh, so she... JC says she doesn't have Stockholm Syndrome. Garrido and Nancy, like I just said, would, you know, 
Nancy even would come in and cry to JC and tell her all her problems and like put that pressure on like an 11 year old 12 year old person saying like oh I'm so sorry for what's happening and then and then uh, Nancy would have a go at her because Garrido loved her you know it was weird psychological sort of stuff uh, what was going on here yeah. I know. Okay. JC, JC said she began to fear for her life, like with the killer dogs and with a man, at, like a man who comes in and rapes you and then the next minute he's crying and saying sorry, like, is he going to flip? Do you know what I mean? And especially when she had the kids, she was like, right, that's it. I'm just going to chill and just look after the kids and not say anything. Um, yeah. According to JC, Philip would give her kittens um, and right. then, okay. w like, when she, after she'd have the kittens for a little bit, he would take them and chop off their heads right in front of her. Whoa. Um, okay. That is, good. That is MK Ultra. Like that's horrible. Um. Eventually, he decided that uh, Snoopy didn't have to be her name, and he said, "You can choose your name," and she chose Alyssa. So she, okay. not JC. Now he said, "Um, choose your name," and she said, "Okay, I'll be." I'll be Alyssa. Okay, name, but... so we'll go back to Greedo. Greedo was already a person of interest because of his oh. 1972... Uh, well done, good win. So 1972, he witnessed, he witnessed intimidate someone, but gets away with it. Um, 1976, like we said, uh, Catherine Calloway was the woman who he kidnapped. Uh, he got a slap from the other woman, like I said. So he asked for a lift, handcuffed Catherine, knocked her out, brought her to a storage lot. A policeman found on the Netflix documentary, which is which is mental, is that... Whoa, Ca whoa, 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 go back. You just said Netflix. They don't sponsor us. No, they don't. Not sponsored. So the From woman... So in 1976, uh, Catherine Calloway is literally on it, the woman who, who got uh, kidnapped in 1976. So this is what 1976 to 42 years on now. I don't know when this so one was. Like I don't know where this one. No, she's like 60 because she got kidnapped to like 20. Uh, okay. She says that he. What she got told is he went to jail for 50 years. Remember I told you 5 0? Mm -hmm. 5 0 years. Um, obviously, he didn't go to jail for 50 years because if he did. This wouldn't have happened. He actually got, got out after like 11 years. Day. He got out after 11 years. But no one told Catherine Calloway. Wow. And she says in documentary that uh, 11 years later, so around 1987, a man approaches her. She still works at the casino as a dealer. A man approaches her and says, um, hi, Catherine. And she's like, hi, because, you, you know, you're wearing a name badge, whatever. And he's like, how are you doing? take care of yourself like do you remember me hope you're well and she's just like thinking what the hell like it doesn't yeah. look like it doesn't look like him like she's put it out of her mind like he's changed in 11 years uh she don't think anything of it until she says she she nearly had a breakdown when this all comes out in 2009 and sees him on the news she realizes that he was released after those 11 years and he came back to visit her can you imagine that your victim who you've gone to jail yeah. for what for what should be 50 years and having the the brass to turn up at the work and be like all right what is that about yeah um That's weird. sure you'll be reckon even though it was 11 years i guess still, i guess she just someone. i guess she was a scarred i guess she looked like you know, you're at work yes, and someone. Really didn't expect to you see, yeah, but you see, how many people it. do you see as a dealer in those eleven years? Like, well, yeah, but if something traumatic happened, you'd like imagine you would you would recognise someone, but also if something traumatic happened, you would definitely recognise. Yeah. yeah, but I think she didn't expect him to be out. So no, she, she thought fifty years. Someone would tell you. Not. You might be like, "Is that him?" Like, don't be stupid. Like, you need to get over this. Like, stop mm. being so stupid. Uh, so Philip himself, he thinks he's really, really smart at this point. He studies psychology in prison. Uh, he says he finds, reli uh, finds religion when he's in prison, which is about those angel demons. He actually carries around a box that he says contained, contains a little, like, f uh, way for him to talk to God. So he was carrying around a box. Um, okay. When he got out... 
he said he set up his own church and he got money from his neighbor he was going around like when he got out like he felt bad and like he was going to set up a church and reform and neighbor gave him some money uh the jail said he was more than likely to offend again but they still released him which is okay crazy yeah. uh, he had a parole officer who came to visit him uh, and this is a fact that you need to remember everyone listening and you two is that the parole officer only ever went to the front door never went in the house never went to the back garden never looked mm. in the back garden okay so this is a parole officer okay so let's talk about nancy then so philip's in jail from 76 to 87 nancy meets philip in prison when visiting her uncle and marries him in 81 um this is really weird because what i'm thinking is she knows he's in prison for a rape. She goes to see her uncle. What's her uncle said like? Because she must have said to her uncle who's in jail, who's that? He looks good. And was like, oh, yeah, he's in here for rape. And what person goes, oh, okay. I want some of that. That's like, what? that's. <laughs> and then what? And then for those six years, he was like, uh, I want you to you know scout out a, a uh, scout out a young girl and then she's still saying this is still a good relationship i'm still enjoying this like come on what is this about <laughs> a bad thing about nancy is 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 this as well is that philip greedo he with his parole thing he also had to go to drug tests he missed a drug test in the early 90s and he actually went because he broke the probation and the things he actually went back to jail for like three months okay nancy carried on she obviously didn't rape jc lee but she didn't let her go she could have let her go in those three or four months because mm. he comes back home and what you're gonna say oh she ran off over you know overpowered me or something but no she carried on She's... Oh yeah, she was obviously scared of him as well then, I guess. Yeah, Maybe. really scared. There's loads of different ways of looking at it. She's either, she was either uh, infatuated with him, she loved him so much, she didn't no. want to let him down, or she was either or scared of him, what, she would, what he would do to her yeah. as well. It just seems like that was a big chance. Uh, one of the creepiest things that I watched researching this is there is a video of Philip playing a guitar by a tree and he's singing a song Nancy's recording and he's singing about raping kids Whoa, he's, he's okay. singing like I'm gonna rape those kids like singing like that <laughs> and Nancy Nancy <laughs> zoom they're sitting by a tree looking at a school and Nancy's like zooms in on him singing and then zooms in on the kids wait is this on a documentary this is no, because it's too sick to be on a documentary. It's on the internet. What? What the oh, fuck? It's so mental. Yes. What? Why I'm is like Nancy? It must be like what you just said, because I put here is Nancy imprisoned? Because this is this is absolutely mental. Like she's she's just as bad, like mental. It's and then freedom of speech, though, isn't it? And then I said about the uncle, like what kind of family introduces someone to a rapist? But um. It's <clears throat> fucking weird. Really weird. What the uh, so, JC was in from 11 in the compound, and she got pregnant after at 14. So what happened is, she says that after three years of getting fast food and getting burgers and getting all, like, you know, KFC and whatever, then one night they co both come in and bring her, like, a home-cooked meal, what? and she's like... What the hell's going on? And he's like, and he's like you're, you're pregnant, watch these videos. <laughs> so, like, gives her some videos to watch. Um, mm. Which is weird, isn't it? Then they started, like, feeding her proper stuff, like, crazy. How did um, they know she was pregnant? Well, because he's, they, he's they, raping um, her all the time. Her make her... Oh, I maybe guessed, or maybe uh, like, wait until she was asleep and then... Did the she, pee test? Oh, God. I don't know. She was only 14 and she was there since 11, so she probably. Don't know. Uh, apparently, when Garrido held up the kid first, like, <clears throat> held up the kid, like, um, in the Lion King, 
He said, <laughs> he apparently said, please, God, give me strength to not hurt this kid. Oh, my God. Uh, she had another kid two years later. And after that second kid, he stopped, like, raping her so much. Like, he's, I don't oh, know. Oh, wow, what a nice bloke. I know. It's sort of like <laughs> after the two kids, he's like, yeah, I'm done raping you now. Um. That's so, enough. we're getting towards, like, God's sake. we're getting towards the mental part, is, so the kids are growing up, and he's like, okay, you can go in the we back. We haven't got to the mental part yet. Wait, are the kids still alive? That's a good question. Yeah. Buddy. My hand is glitching out. It's flying in the air in the middle of the table. Um, so the kids started growing up, and he's like, yeah, you can go out into the garden and plant some flowers and that, like, come out the sheds. So they're, like, in the garden when Nancy... My game is glitching out. Uh, they're like planting flowers. He's letting them out the shed a little bit. And the neighbours, there's a woman on the documentary as well. We would see these kids in the garden. No one called the police, but like he would always come up with, he would like say to him like, oh, this is my brother-in-law's kids, you know. Who, he would who make up. Locked in the shed. Yeah, but they they wouldn't see him. They the wouldn't see him in the shed because. If if you there's pictures like he it's covered in trees and like all this stuff so you can't actually see all these buildings you can just see kids in the yard just um doing it uh, a guy called Patrick McQuaid uh, met J C Lee through a fence in the mid 90s and asked her name so next door neighbor Patrick uh, a young kid at the time as well said like hi what's your name and she went my name's J C J C Lee and then he's like, okay. <laughs> like, he didn't know he's a kid. He's just, like, seeing a girl next door. And then uh, Philip found out about this. They had, like, those Ameri like a small American fence. Uh, straight afterwards, he built eight-foot-high fences. So <laughs> he, w he got away with that one and then built a huge fence. No one mentioned it. The parole didn't oh, mention gosh. it. They weren't like, where's this guy who's got an eight-foot fence? But... Uh, yeah, that is weird. We now moved on about 10 years, so we moved on to early 2000s. Philip, you know, he stopped raping. There's two kids. He's like, you know what? I'm going to integrate these people into my life. So he moves them from the shed into the house. They're in the house. They've upgraded, okay. guys. They're upgraded. They're in the house. Wow. Uh, JC even met people in the house. Uh, obviously introduced herself as Alyssa. Uh, he would... Uh, um, they had a printing business now, so uh, Philip and Nancy run a printing business out of the home, like printing cards and printing leaflets and stuff like that. Um, people would come round to grab these stuff, and he'd uh, and he'd introduce them differently each time. Sometimes he'd say that um, they were like brother-in-law friends some people came over said they thought JC was the wife of um, Philip and that Nancy because she's like foreign looking and like um, they thought she was a maid he'd be like yeah this is my mm. wife this is my wife and yeah these are our kids and weird uh, people obviously didn't say they anything thought, they, they, they thought that they thought jc was the wife of philip even though there would have been some considerable age difference yeah like 40 to 40 50 to 20 but what are you gonna say okay what are you gonna say if someone says yeah this is my wife well yeah uh the two so the kids lee yeah the two daughters they are called angel and starlet Oh, um, names. He told the he told the kids at the start that they were all sisters. So like they he told the kids that like Nancy's your mum and JC's your sister. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why people say about that Stockholm as well is because that Nancy worked at Nancy. JC was working on a printing business. She was answering the phones and using the computer, so she had the phone and she had the internet, and she didn't do anything obviously she was probably frightened but 
she had the internet and the phone and like she would answer the phone it's not like hello is that a gorilla his printing business i'm being held captive <laughs> <laughs> but you know if you're really scared she says that she didn't want to do anything until she was sure that she wasn't going to be uh, hurt which yeah. is fair enough, isn't it? Because if you said something and then the police are like, yeah, I'll be there in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Greedo starts to slip up now and we're coming towards the end of this mental, mental case. Um, he's brought him into the house. Kids are growing up now. I think they're like... This must be when they're reaching their teenage years. He just normalises his household and he brings the kids out with him. Greedo... He carries the kids uh, around with him. They've still been in that um, shed for like most of their life. They're really pale. Uh, they've obviously got a bit of sunlight deficiency. They can't actually open their eyes all the way sometimes because of the sun. JC Lee says on uh, ABC that sometimes when it's really sunny, like it just hurts her eyes too much. Still. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, he brings them round. And Greedo now, this is where he messes up, is um, <laughs> he takes his two daughters t with him to the FBI offices in Car uh, Carolina and he gives them a four-page essay on how to fix sex offenders. So he goes to the FBI with what? his two... He goes to the FBI with his two kids and a four-page report and he goes, listen, guys... I used to rape people, yeah, but I've changed. I found God. Here's a doc. Here's um. Here's this. Uh, if the FBI, you know, want to read up on it and get back to me, I'll host a few seminars. Cheers, guys. See you later. Um, then he wanted to do a presentation at the University of Berkeley. Uh, he says it was going to be about fixing sexual problems because remember he says he's fixed all his. God's come to him. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the University of Berkeley, does the same thing. He's got two kids. This is where it starts to get mental, is that there are a couple of cops, two women police officers on campus, and they see these two young um, two young girls with this guy, and they look really pale, and they just look really shifty, and like really... They just look as weird as you can imagine they would be. And they're like... This is this is weird. Invite him back to a second interview. So they're like, okay, come back tomorrow and talk about your Berkeley thing. Uh, talk about what you want to do. Um, so he comes back the next day. In the meantime, the two women have looked him up and found out, you know, one, this guy sh is not allowed to be with kids. Like, he shouldn't be with kids. It was in his thing. He's not allowed to be with kids after my second interview. He admits... To the rape in 76 he's breaking his parole because he's he's gone past state lines which was one of his thing to even show up to this university so they're like you're with kids you're broken parole so they call so they uh, ask for the names of the kids they look them up on um the database they don't exist obviously because obviously they haven't been registered so they call his parole officer and say uh you're right got philip philip greedo here um Who's his two kids? And his parole officer says, he doesn't have kids. He's not allowed to be with kids. And they're like, um, well, he's turned out with two kids saying that they're his daughters and they look like him and, you know, what's going on here? Um, the two off the two women are in the documentary as well. They're so happy. They were like, I see needs, I see needs kids. And I was like, I'm a mum, And I'm like, no, they weren't. That wasn't with their kids, and like you know, they they literally did a great job. These two women. So they asked him who the kids were, and to prove his innocence, he brung J C Lee the next day for some reason. He brung J C okay. Lee down to the to meet the police, and he told police that. I'm not proving his innocence. Because he's like. But bringing someone that you kidnapped. Because he brung him down, and he was like, "Here's here's here's my wife." I'm right. <laughs> like he. What he says to the police, this is a tongue twister. He says to the police, they're like, who are these kids? And he says, uh, the father of the kids are the son of his mother. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and what? the police, he's, the father of these kids are the son, are the son of his mother. 
Okay, so that basically means him. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, "What the hell are you chatting about, man? Like, tell us." And then they get JC Lee in the other room, and they're like, "What's going on?" And she's like, she says, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a domestic abuse victim, and I've run away from home. My name's Alicia. Uh, someone's, someone's beating me up. I, um, you know, blah blah blah." And they're like, "Is this right?" And then she keeps changing her story. And uh, eventually, in the other room, at the same time, Philip's already spilled the beans. He's given up now. He says, yeah, that's JC Lee. You know, I took her. And, but then, in, still in the other room, they're saying to JC, what's your name? And she's saying, she couldn't write it down because she said she couldn't even remember. Oh, no, she couldn't say her name. She was still saying her name was Alicia. And they were like, oh, come on, we know your name's... Uh, we know who you are really write your name down she says that she couldn't actually write down her name because she couldn't she hadn't written JC Lee Dugard since she was 11 uh, mm. so eventually um, yeah they find out they're like go on write your go on write your name oh no it wasn't that she couldn't sorry it wasn't that she couldn't write her name she couldn't say her name she says that she didn't okay. even know how to pronounce her name anymore her old name, JC. So she writes down okay. her name. So that's where the story ends, really. Because after that, they get uh, Philip and get Nancy and fling them in the old slammer. Uh, this comes Kill to them. light. This comes to the reason why this comes to light is it comes to light in 2010 or 11. So like two years afterwards, uh, JC does the first interview on CBS and then she does another one in. 2015 so she's come out in front of the camera and spoken she says that when she wrote down that JC Lee Dugard it was really weird because she says it looked like a kid's writing when they're like write down your name she wrote it down she was like that's an 11 year old's writing do you know what I mean that is creepy mm -hmm. uh, when JC was found they called Carl and called her mum and said we found JC Lee and this and they thought it was a joke obviously because it was 18 years later. And he's just like, this is yeah, got to yeah. be some sort of joke. Uh, JC says that uh, Star... What's the name? Starlit and Angel still call um, mm. Philip Dad. They still call him Dad. And they were oh, really up, and they were really upset when he went to jail. Um, mm. She says that she well, lets... They would if they didn't know the real truth. Exactly. She says that she lets them call, um, call them... She lets them call him dad because then that means she's got a position of power. She owns what happened. Like she says, you know, it was that he is your dad, but you know, that don't make it right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then she, she, in the 2015 one, now she's doing some work for, for helping other victims. But it's mental because she's. You know, you could imagine if you got locked away for 18 years, and this is what we're going to talk about, like a victim, imagine you went away for that long, since you're 11 mm. years old, and then to come out and give these two two documentaries, and she like speaks so well, and she's so normal. It's a weird thing to say, but she's normal. After all that time. Yeah, I get what you mean. Crazy. You think that she might come out like a little loony or something. But normal. She comes out, speaks, you know, I wouldn't in love with him, I'm surviving. Not Stockholm Syndrome, blah, blah, blah. This happened. Glad to be home, you know. That is weird. That is a crazy, crazy story. No. They're no. both in jail, Philip and Nancy. They don't speak to each other because Good. they blame each other about whatever. Um, Should have got the death penalty, idiot. Should have done. Even though he didn't murder, but the raping and all that business. Mental. What's the? I need to see that that um documentary from the uh, very well known, very well respected uh, Netflix video streaming website. Whoa, oh, you Barton, have to say it, didn't you? <laughs> net, net, <laughs> no, uh, uh, um, uh, um, bet, bet TV streaming bet, program service. Bet chicks. Rhymes bet. with bet chicks. <laughs> yeah. What's good on what? The thing is, like, when we'll do next time is do another unsolved one, like we were speculating on John Bonet. With a solved one, is sort of you look at the thing. So the documentary 
it shows the yard and you can see the thing and it talks to a couple of the neighbors and you you can see how well hidden it is like you might be like if you live next door surely you'd know but if you're next door and someone's building some stuff you're not going to be like what's going on back there because you don't know what is do you know what i mean you don't know what he's like it was mainly talks about his past one it talks to Catherine calloway it is crazy but yeah it was it was a good documentary it's a short one only 48 minutes long um hmm. let's end with a couple of questions lee lee um i ain't got any questions no i'm asking you questions uh the police did the police could the police have stopped this before 2009 in your opinion parole parole that's about it yeah do you think I that do you think that if if you i know they probably got a lot of people to see but do you think they if you're on parole you have to make it your job to you, at least check, go in the yeah, house, check the house yeah and see go in do. one day see yeah, what's going on person I feel responsible. yeah um dan do you think it was stockholm syndrome like people say let some call them dad you know, worked well, in the no, business, that's, didn't that's answer. The, that's, that's the truth, isn't it? But he, whichever way you look at it, and if you don't want it to be true, yeah. he is their dad. So, yeah. I suppose, it's not the kid's fault, is it? No. She's She doesn't want to uh, deprive them of having a dad, I suppose, or yeah, yeah, yeah. saying, oh, look, look, this is your dad. He is a prick, but, you know, you call him dad, he did break me, blah, blah, blah. Well, I suppose... Yeah, but they don't know, know, do that. they? Well, if you're in a tent, <clears throat> that's your life. I, I don't know. But it's... it wasn't... I don't know. It, it, yes and no being stopping. Really? I'm then decided. Yeah. Um... Undecided. Do you under do you understand why every single thing that comes out about so uh, with the two main ones so this one J.C. Lee Dugard and then Joseph Fritzl the two cases where the people you know get kidnapped and actually come back like years later like twenty years later. And the first thing people say is, why didn't you try and get away? Or why didn't you try and do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or, you know, what do you say to those people? Either of you. Because, you know, she was, on, she, she, was on the, she was on the phone and on the internet in this one. This is probably weirder than Joseph Fritzl. Do you think she was just, mm. you got two kids and you're like, scared, what do you say? You? What do you say on the phone? That's what I say to those people. What are you going to say? Like someone calls it, okay, hello, is that, uh... Well, she probably didn't it's, it's, it's either, like they said, Stockholm Syndrome, she's, she's like scared for her life, for other people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you've got the third option, like what you briefly touched on, like where you said she didn't know how to write a name or pronounce a name, whatever. Yeah, nothing. Maybe she just, Alyssa. maybe she forgot who she was. Maybe. maybe maybe she had settled not settled into a life of being raped and blah 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 because that's horrible <laughs> horrible but yeah like, settled into that believe uh, yeah that that, that make believe uh, life it's just like the rape victims isn't it like you're too scared to come out yeah 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 well you you're intimidated one i think for that it's just more of a she was thinking i've got two kids and what are you going to say is someone calls out and goes, is that Garrido's uh, printing? And you just go, uh, hi, my name's Jason Lee. I've been kidnapped. I'm at this house. Please help me. And then, like, in that time, he's, like, shot your kids and, like, killed himself yeah. and killed you. Like, what can you do? Exactly. In the Joseph Fritzl, in like the Joseph Fritzl one, uh, they were in, it's a bit different because they were obviously in a soundproof. They were in the basement. But people even heard noises in the basement. Oh my god, he's gonna get a straight. Not a ten. Oh wow, well, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Noises coming from the basement, but didn't do anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, um. Mm. So I don't think there was a way to escape. Very weird on Philip's behalf, though. I find weird that 
he just gave up. He rate, yeah, he got old. To be fair, I hate yeah. that. I hate that as, as well. When they use next week, oh, I used to rate, but now I found God. Yeah, yeah I'm not, you know, bashing people yeah. can believe what they like to believe. But I hate that when they go, oh, the I've excuse, been a bad, yeah. bad boy. I've had this. I've had that. But I found God, so don't be too mean on me. Don't be too harsh. Like the like the ISIS where they say they do it because they commit suicide so they can go to their heaven and get uh, forty two yeah. virgins and that. It's, it's like, not, I don't think it's forty two. Other uh, people use religion as an excuse as well, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's I, it sick. does seem like he either had a had a little bit of regret or that was the end of the thing, like. But he sort of gave up at the end, or he was being too cocky. It was sort of, sort of weird. Parallels to Fritz. Parallels to Fritz. Yeah, he's yeah. he is still like parallels to Fritz, who was even older. And Fritz obviously got caught because he actually yeah, took. Yeah, but you lose the drive, don't you? Yeah, Fritz yeah. got caught because he took the one of the kids, didn't he, to the hospital when she was ill, and he was just like, you know, mm. that's when he gave up. Fritz was just like. Uh, you know, I've given up now. I'm like seventy odd. Bring the kids to the hospital. You know you're gonna get, you know you're gonna get caught. It's a like game over. But yeah. yeah, back out. Kidnapped at eleven. I think the main victims are obviously JC, the kids, and um, the the dad. and Carl, stepdad. Dad, five five polygraphs, eighteen years. Put a real strain on him and his wife's but what, well, thing. What, the police could have. What, if he gave that really good description. He gave it. When they come out, they're just like, oh, you know, sorry. And they, and they didn't do nothing. Sorry. Should have paid him a lot of money. Mm. Well, I hope those cops go to hell. Yeah. The well, ones that were charged with that case then. Mental. Cause but yeah. A lot of lives. Like people say they got blood in their hands. Well, they've got. Uh, they keep, 18 years. Know, got on that, live on that one without a conscience. 18 so years. Alive. Apparently the kids are doing okay, obviously, but, you know, they're probably <laughs> messed up. But hopefully they'll yeah. be alright. But yeah, a, a, a true a true solved case there for you, with kind of a happy ending? <laughs> I don't know, such a weird one, it's like, no it's one died, no, no one died, and she was found again. That's all I say. That's... The best Imagine part the about it. That'll be 18 years. Wow. Um, obviously, we've lost. We're losing some midweeks. Uh, some midweeks. Some late nights for these two. The next one will be a true unsolved. I'm not sure who to do, oh, though. Oh, oh. Not sure who to do. <laughs> um, we'll probably. Oh, no. We were going to do. We're going to do a. Um, a solved unsolved okay so a case that has been solved but obviously still has its doubts and okay. it's open for investigation so that will Ooh. be the next time don't know when that'll be because that, uh, that one also has a documentary on bet chicks your generic video streaming platform but do bet, sponsor bet, us bet chick. i'm not bet chicks um sounds like a website I'm yeah, it does. Later just, on. They don't sponsor us. It sounds like a video. It sounds like a website that John uh, Philip Garrido would be on back in the day. Bloody, <laughs> 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 bloody <laughs> peeping Tom. Right, thanks guys for watching. Thanks to these two again. And remember, it's a pleasure. Remember, uh, what's the what's the catchy catchphrase? Don't, don't be uh, a nonce. Remember, there we go. Remember, don't be a nonce. Lock your doors, don't be a nonce, and look, un <laughs> and look under your bed. The boogeyman's coming. Don't be a pedo. Ah. Just do judo. Okay. And keep, your, keep your eyes out for Maddie. See you next time, guys.